All right, folks, this is number 13 for my students, and this comes from Sir Wayne Jewett, the ninth edition, chapter 24. This is problem number 35. So we have a solid sphere of a certain radius. Okay. Um, and the big radius R, and it has a charge Q uniformly distributed throughout. So this must be an insulator and not a conductor. And then we're going to calculate the magnetic, uh, sorry, the electric field um, in lots of different locations. Uh, basically, we're going to look at the inside. We're going to look at the very shell, the edge of the conductor, and then we're going to look on the outside as well. All right. So uh, the first, the first questions ask about uh, zero and ten centimeters, which is inside my my particular conductor uh, insulator. So we're just going to list some values here. We know that Q for me is 44.7 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs and that the big radius is 40 centimeters 0 0.4 meters okay and so we're going to first of all look for the conditions where little r the radius of our gaussian is going to be less than big r okay and we know from uh well, let's actually draw the gaussian inside there first i should have drawn my, my little guy bigger so let's make this guy be my Gaussian. Sorry for the size. That's little r. Okay. Or little r on the inside if we want to label it like that. Okay. And so Gauss's law, E on the inside, because we're talking about that particular situation, dotted into dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And rho is going to be you know the key here right so we have this we have um we're only interested in the charge that's enclosed in the gaussian not the total charge so we need to figure out what that ratio is and we do that of course through through volume q uh rho is q over volume and so q is rho over volume and that's true for any uh, constant density and so q enclosed is simply going to be the density which is constant times the volume enclosed, the volume of our little Gaussian. And because the charge here is positive, the electric field is going out everywhere and along our differential, along our Gaussian, the differential area is pointing in the same direction, radially outward, they're in the same direction, so the dot product becomes one. And E is going to be constant everywhere along that, along that Gaussian, so we can pull it out of the integral. And we see that the electric field on the inside times the area of the Gaussian surface is equal to Q enclosed. And Q enclosed is simply rho times the volume enclosed. And don't forget your epsilon naught. Okay, and so the electric field on the inside times the area of the Gaussian. And the area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared, little r. And the volume of the enclosed circle, the enclosed Gaussian, is 4 thirds pi little r cubed. And all of that is over epsilon naught. Okay, so some things cancel. The 4s cancel, the pi's cancel, the r squareds cancel over there and there. And then we can write the electric field on the inside is equal to the density times r over 3 epsilon naught. And we could stop there if we wanted to do the calculations. We could then calculate what the density is by taking the total charge Q divided by the total volume. Or we can do that. Um, we could, you know, calculate what that value is. Or we can just do it mathematically here. So the density is Q over the big volume, total volume, times R over 3 epsilon naught. And the volume of the big sphere, the total sphere, this is the total Q, so this is the total volume, is 4 thirds, 4 thirds pi big R cubed. And so that's that part. And then we have R over 3 epsilon naught. The threes cancel. And, um, 4 pi epsilon is k. So this becomes a k big Q over r cubed. Right? 
And so all of that is constant. And then we're left with a R. So on the inside, the electric field is proportional to R. As R gets, um, as R gets bigger, E gets bigger. But this is only true until you get to big R. This is only true on the inside. All right. So part A asks, what is uh, the electric field when R equals zero meters? Okay. And when R equals zero, the electric field equals zero. So we try that. Oh my goodness. Let me pause and log in. Okay, so let's try again. Uh, we type in our zero. Submit the answer. Okay. Okay, and then um, the next problem asks, what about 10 centimeters from the center? So 0 0.1 meters. And now we're just going to plug numbers in. So I think I'll use this guy here calculate. So K is built in for me. So alpha K times our charge Q is 44.7 E negative 6. Uh, we're going to divide by the big radius and that, that's the big R. 0.4 0 0.4 and I'm going to cube it. So you could do caret 3 or you can do this cool thing. Go to math go down to 3 and you can cube that. And then we're going to multiply by r, which is point zero point one. Okay, so we hit enter, and that answer is six point two. Um, we'll call it nine times ten to the fifth. But it's looking for kilonewtons per coulomb, so this is newtons per coulomb, which is six hundred and twenty-nine kilonewtons per coulomb. So let's see if that works. Okay, great. And so now we continue with the electric field at the edge of our surface here. So R is 0 0.4 meters. And for that, I can just do second enter and change my radius to 0 0.4. 2.51 times 10 to the 6 Newton per coulomb is 2. That's a point there. 2510 kilonewtons per coulomb. Let's see if that works. And that does, and that's on the very edge of our of our surface. So for the next problem, we have to figure out what is the electric field on the outside. So this is when R is greater than than big R. So R is greater than, you could actually say equal to in both of these cases. Okay. And so if we redraw our picture here, we have our big R here, we have our Q, and then our Gaussian surface is now on the outside. This is an easier problem. Hopefully you, you see the solution. Uh, we know that the uh, Gauss's law says that E in this case we're on the outside, got it into dA, is equal to a charge enclosed over epsilon naught. So because the electric field, this is a positive charge, because the electric field is this way and dA is this way, <clears throat> E everywhere on the dotted line is a constant, uh, E dot dA is 1. And so this is just E out times the, the total area of our Gaussian. The charge enclosed is simply Q. It's the charge enclosed. That's nice. Okay. And so E out. We have 4 pi R squared. It's the area of the Gaussian. And that Q is that Q. The Q that we already know. So E out is q over 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over r squared and 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is k and this is 
very much like a point charge. Or we assume that all the, the we can assume that all of the charge is concentrated to a point, and then the electric field is simply the, mimics that of a point charge. Okay. Um, and so for D, where what is the electric field for me when R is 58 centimeters? Okay. So here I'm going to take my Q or my K rather and multiply it by my Q. 44.7 microcoulombs, and now we're going to divide by the radius squared, and my radius is 0 0.58 squared, 1.96 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb, which is, um, oh sorry, there's a 1 missing there, 1.1196 which is 1196 kilonewtons per coulomb. So let's see if that works. All right, on to the last problem.